Hello, my name's Justin from BISH. As you can see, I'm here answering your questions about sex and relationships and you. Um, the website's for everyone over 14, if you don't already know. Um, and um, yeah, so this question is about fantasy and sexuality and sex. Um, there are no content notes in this, but that's what we're talking about uh, today. So here is the question, as you can see on screen. Uh, this seems really daft, but it's giving me intense anxiety. Uh, when I get a sex dream, I'm female, it feels so much better slash more intense than sex in real life with my boyfriend. I do enjoy sex with my boyfriend, but don't get the same intense groinal response. So, response in our groins, genitals as well. Uh, saying groinal response, as I do in my dreams. I just like saying the word groinal. Um, uh, I occasionally get sex dreams about people I'm not attracted to, i.e. saying sex dreams. Um, does this mean I'm not attracted to my boyfriend? Could this mean I'm actually gay as I'm more aroused by the same sex content in my dreams? I feel so silly for asking. Um, don't feel silly for asking. Uh, well, it's easier said than done. Please don't feel silly for asking. Um, please don't feel daft. Uh, this is a really good question. A lot of people will be thinking similar things. People do think similar things. People have written to me about fantasies before. Uh, it's totally fine to have fantasies. Uh, and so it's okay. Um, so people have lots of, not. I wouldn't go as far as to say that everybody fantasizes, um, certainly about sex, because not everyone is like someone who experiences sexual attraction or sexual feelings, but most people experience some kind of fantasy. It could be the kind of rich, sexy dreams, like what you're having. Um, it could just be kind of like um, sexy daydreams that people might have, or just kind of sexual thoughts. Or it could also be the kinds of sexual thoughts that people have when they might see people having sex in porn or TV, um, or read about it or hear about it. You know, um, people could just have like random sexual thoughts based on what they uh, encounter, what they see and uh, read and hear. It's also okay to be uh, turned on by them, and also it's okay for fantasies and sexy dreams like what you're having uh, to be the most sexy thing that you do. Like we have this thing in our society where we're said it's said that the most sexy thing that you should be doing is the sex that you have with your partner, uh, in-person sex where there's actual touching and contacts and all that kind of stuff. And I personally think that's bollocks. Like if people want to. If people want to and are happy with it, which is something we'll get on to, um, enjoy sex just by themselves or in their own fantasy world more than anything else that they could do with anyone else, that's fine. You could also have a really enjoyable time with people uh, that you're having sex with in real life that might not be as hot, might not be as groinal, as you say, um, but uh, it still feels good. And so we don't have to be like, uh, one has to be better than the other. Sadly, a lot of people feel really bad about fantasy and are bad that they're really enjoying being by themselves or enjoying their own sexy time, for example, also from masturbation, than, um, than sexy times with someone else. And this is because we get really bad sex education about masturbation, but also bad sex education about fantasies. Like, were you ever taught about fantasy in any of your sex education whatsoever? No, probably not. Like, you're probably taught about... You know, don't get pregnant, don't get someone pregnant, don't get a nasty STI, which is what most people, sadly, are still taught about. So, fantasy is this weird thing because most people have them, but most people also don't talk about them a great deal. So, uh, I'm glad you asked this question. Now, it's completely okay for fantasies just to um, be on their own. Like, they don't have to mean anything. Like, if you can just be like, uh, oh, I'm having sexy dreams kind of hot, okay, and then just get on with the rest of your day or the rest of your life. That's completely fine. And a lot of people do that. They just see fantasy as just something that they enjoy and that's it, just like they might enjoy anything else. So fantasy doesn't mean anything and it also doesn't necessarily mean anything in real life, but it can do. And if you're really interested in thinking more about fantasies and you're curious about your fantasies and you kind of like, like want to pull on a thread and see where it takes you to see whether you, you might learn something about you or learn something about your attractions or learn something about your desires or just to learn something about you generally, then you can. But it doesn't necessarily have to mean so. We only, fantasies only can re only like mean anything to us if we make them mean something. And that's something that you could do if you wanted. But if you also don't want to, that's also fine. 
if you wanted to have a think about your fantasies, I've actually written a, as you can see, I've written um, a blog post about this. So uh, a lot of people write to me really worried about their fantasies. Um, and I, so I've written about this here and how you can deal with or not deal with fantasies. But also you could kind of find out a bit more about your fantasies. Now you don't have to do this, but what you could start doing is to be a bit forensic about this. Like you're gonna be the expert about this because your fantasies are happening in your world and in your life. I have no idea what's going on. Also, I'm not a therapist. Uh, there are some therapists like psychoanalysts uh, who might ask you to uh, talk about your dreams and dreams are a really interesting way of figuring out uh, what's going on for you. I am not a therapist, uh, but I have read a lot about fantasy and um, and sex. Um, so I do know that they can give really interesting information about our, ourselves. So what you could do is to actually maybe write down some of your fantasies. It could be that the thing that you're really remembering is, oh my God, it's the same sex attraction. Uh, and this is the thing that you're kind of remembering and you're going into this thing about, well, what does this say about my sexuality? What does this mean about whether I'm, what, what my true sexuality is and whether I'm really attracted to my boyfriend? So instead of kind of just leaping to that, if you write down your fantasies and kind of really try to remember everything that was going on, you might remember quite a lot more about who is involved and why. And it might start to, if you start to kind of unpack it a bit more, you might not immediately jump to, oh my God, what does this mean for me and my boyfriend? But it might mean, hmm, this is interesting, it's telling me a bit more information. Um, one thing you might want to think about is what kind of state of mind you're in during the day when you're having the fantasies at night. So if you notice that you're having your sexy dreams on particular days, as well as noticing what is down, what as well as noticing what you have in your fantasy, also note down what's going on for you during the day, and just try to gently see whether there's anything going on and anything that you notice and anything where you go, huh, that's interesting. Also think about what's happening in the fantasy. Like, is it uh, always you in the fantasy that things are happening to? Who are the other people in the fantasy? Do they remind you of anyone? Are they famous or people you know in real life? Maybe some of those people in your fantasy kind of remind you of yourself. Uh, there's one argument which um, some psychoanalysts kind of suggest, which is that everyone in our nightmares and also in our fantasies represent in some way part of ourselves. So maybe if you go really deeply and start to, if you get really interested in this, you can start to think, well, what if some of the people in my fantasies were actually sides of me or parts of me or in some way embodying a different personality or a different side of me that I'm not really paying attention to in my daily life? So that's interesting. By doing this kind of stuff, by thinking about your fantasies a little bit more, then it might take up a little bit less of your headspace in real life. You say that you're feeling really intensely anxious about this, and I'm sorry that that's happening, but hopefully, maybe what is, but maybe what is happening is that the anxiety is coming from your the fear and stigma and shame about having a fantasy in the first place. So if I tell you that it's completely fine to have a fantasy, and maybe if you want to, that there could be some useful information there, uh, if you wanted to kind of unpack them and sit with them, then that might make you feel less anxious generally uh, about having fantasies. And then it might be something that you could just kind of, as I said at the beginning, that you could just kind of enjoy and then get on with your day and it doesn't have to mean anything. So your question about whether it is like somehow affecting your sexuality or whether it's telling you information about your sexuality that you didn't already know. So for example, it's making you question your attraction to, to your boyfriend. Fantasy and sexuality are way more complicated than that, like way more complicated. Um, so you need to slow this kind of thing down. So for some fan there is no like true sexuality, okay? Sexuality is something that you kind of become you you it emerges it you grow into it you uh it kind of it's constantly changing you might want to definitely label yourself a sexuality which is also fine so um you know common labels of sexuality gay straight bi um pansexual um uh lesbian or although lesbian and gay as you used in your um question are uh, often the same word for for people but that's not how, like, sexuality is something that also kind of just grows. And, and so you could be someone who is straight, who has, who in your IRL sex 
want to have sex with men, want to have sex specifically with your boyfriend, and even if you have same-sex fantasies, that doesn't mean that you are anything other than a straight. That's for you to decide. A more interesting way of thinking about sexuality is on a scale. As you can see here, I've got like a Kinsey scale. Uh, Kinsey was a sex researcher. Uh, can you see that? Yes. Kinsey was a sex researcher in the 1940s uh, and probably did some of the best sex research. Um, and he came up with a scale of sexuality where uh, zero is exclusively heterosexual to six, which is totally homosexual. And also I've added in there that there is an asexuality scale as well, where people go from a sexual to asexual or um, uh, allosexual is the correct term uh, to asexual. So if you think about your sexuality on a scale like this, you might think that you are mostly heterosexual, or you could say, you know, I'm mostly heterosexual, I am mostly straight back, but occasionally I have these really sexy dreams about someone who is of the same sex. But that doesn't mean that you are anything other than heterosexual. These are all things for you to decide, but this is uh, hopefully a helpful post that might help you to decide that. The other thing is that our sexualities are made up of what it, who it is that we desire, what it is that we do, and how it is that we might identify. So these, if you think about these as being three different circles that may overlap or may not overlap. So for example, I'll show you this, so I'll just expand this. So you should be able to see there that if you think about these three different circles, they're all similar color, I should fix that. Um, so as you can see here, sometimes desire and identity and what we do overlaps. Sometimes it overlaps really neatly. Sometimes it doesn't overlap at all, okay? And that's, all of these are completely fine. If you're fine with it, you're fine with it. But again, the thing that makes people not fine about it is the shitty things that were taught about sexuality and the shame that goes with sexuality, okay? There's a lot more about this on this post here. What, what's your sexuality? So check that out. I think finally as well we could you could start thinking about what's going on with you and your boyfriend you say that the sex is that you enjoy the sex that you have with your boyfriend then everything sounds fine there and as i say your fantasy world can remain entirely separate from your in-person like sexual world the things that happen between you and your boyfriend but maybe if you want a more like groinal uh, response from sex with your boyfriend, if you want a more e an even more exciting time, you could start to think about what it is that might make for a more exciting sex. So are you able to talk to each other about the things that you um, really want to do? Um, are you able to, are you spending enough time making sure that you can have those conversations? Uh, are you both able to slow down and be really present with each other? Um, so you can start to think about different ways that you can make sex enjoyable. And yes, I've got an article at my website about how to make sex more enjoyable. It's a big, interesting, long post. But crucially, sex isn't just something like in-person sex, isn't just like what your bodies do to each other. It's not just like, oh, does that feel good? Oh yeah, that feels good. It's not just like how people are like touching each other's bodies and prodding each other's bodies and what people's bodies do with each other. That's a very, very small amount of sex. Like a much bigger um, part of sex is what it is that we're thinking about, what it is that, how things are feeling. Um, there, there's uh, an, one interesting way of thinking about sex is that there, when you're having sex with another person, and this is Kate Bornstein and Barbara Corellis who came up with this idea, is that you might be in three different modes when you have sex. So it might be that when you have sex, that your mindset, the kind of thing going on in your head, is all about the connection with the other person, like the intimacy and the connection with the other person. So what you can see from the other person, what you can hear, how it feels when you snog, what this means for you in your relationship, the kind of the biological things going on, like the, you know, looking into their eyes and hearing what they, hearing their breathing and hearing what they say and all that kind of stuff. Like so, sometimes you might focus on that really, deep connection that you might have with someone. Other times you might go into more of a role kind of space. So um, when people have sex, they often take roles. I've, again, I've written about this on my website. Again, I've written about this on my website. Um, so about tops and bottoms, but also this is like to do with like, you might play a role about who is more in charge of a sexual situation, who is or who is the more active person in a sexual situation, um, or whether there's an interchange of those things and whether you're switching between the two. This can be about kink, but also can just be generally about the dynamic. So 
um, it could be like a, an explicitly expressed I'm going to do this to you or I want you to do this to me or it could be less expressed and it could just be a dynamic that is playing out when you're having sex so you could be in that kind of mindset too but the other mindset that you can be in whilst you're having sex with certainly with particular kinds of sex is to go into a fantasy world and it's okay to fantasize during sex some people say that it's not okay to fantasize about other people when you're having sex but I don't think we should be policing each other's fantasies like that um, so if you're doing a kind of sex where it's possible for you to get into your own headspace so for example if your partner's doing something to you and you're not having to do anything and you can just kind of like relax and go into a headspace then and you allow yourself to fantasize about something as well as enjoying what is actually happening in that moment then you might get a feeling of intensity of something a bit more groinal like you were talking about in your question and so you might start enjoying sex more but there are these three different modes and it's okay to be in these three different modes where you're really connected to the other person or whether there's a role that you're playing or whether you're just in your own headspace just really enjoying what's going on but also having thoughts and sexy ideas and, and the ability to fantasize as well as to enjoy what is going on. I hope that makes some sense. Um, so all I'm really saying here is it's all okay. Um, if you want to think about it a bit more, you can. And here are some things that you can think about. Um, it's okay to have fantasies. Uh, same sex attractions are also okay. It's okay to be figuring all this out for yourself. Um, sexuality and fantasy is never simple. Uh, it's something that um, changes and grows and constantly throughout our lives. And it's okay not to have the answers all the time. You don't have to have fixed answers and fixed ideas about who you are and work out in order to work out who you are and what kind of person you are. I hope you find that helpful. If you have any questions that you would like to ask me, please have a search at the website first. So go to have a look see have a search through the website there is a search button there as well as all these other categories and if you want to ask me a question you can go to ask bish here are the terms and conditions for asking me a question please stop asking me if you're pregnant and you can ask your question here uh, you don't need to leave your email address you can if you want me to tell you that i've answered your question and you don't have to put a subject in but you do just have to put your message in here and type in the security code and send okay until next time